Welcome back guys. I told you you didn't have to wait too long. I'm actually recording this right after our previous video. So in the last video, we looked at CodeSys. We did an introduction to CodeSys, what it was and how we can create a new program inside of it. We just created a basic control latch, declared some variables. And then we also showed you how you can use it simulator as well, just to test our program out nice and easily. What we're gonna have a look at today is timers in CodeSys. Now there's two main types of timers that we can use in CodeSys. We've got our TO which is our timer on delay and we've got our TOF which is our timer off delay. Now these timers are very similar to timers inside of Siemens TIA portal for example and they're similar for a reason and that's because these are our IEC 61131-3 timers. This means they're set to a standard so when we move these between PLCs they all maintain the same standard. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to have a look at our TON timer. And we're going to use our TON timer to control a basic valve and pump program. We've got one valve, two pumps. What we want to do is when we run our process, we want our valve to turn on, wait five seconds to allow the valve to fully open. Then what we'll do is we'll turn our pump one on, run our pump for 10 seconds, turn our pump one off, then turn our pump two on, run that for 10 seconds and then turn off the process. We'll then download this to our simulator, test it out and see the TON working. So let's get started. Now what I want to do is I want to put in a new network. Now to put in a new network, all we would do is just click this icon over here or inside of our general box, we've got a new network over here as well. Make sure there's no network selected. If there is, like this guy here, when I press new network, it'll insert it above. So if I want to insert it below, I can either drag this down to this down arrow or I just make sure no network selected, insert new network and it inserts a new network after the last network. So I'm going to put in a normally open contact and I'm going to assign this to my run signal. And then what we're going to do is we're then going to take this to a coil and this coil is going to be our valve. I'm going to just assign this to another variable inside of our simulator, inside of our computer. Say OK to that. And there's our valve there for us. And what we want to do is when the valve has turned on, we then want to wait 10, uh, 5 seconds. So I'm going to branch down. So insert branch. And then I'm going to grab the TON and drop this onto this green node over here. And we're going to give it a name. You could leave it as TON0 if you wanted to. I'm going to give it a name just to show you what it looks like. So valve delay. If I press enter, it then asks you for just to declare the variable. So I'll just say OK to that. And there we can see up here valve delay and it's got TON inside of our list. And that TON there is our data type that we're using. Now what we want to do is where we see the PT, we want to type in how long we want to run this timer for. And it's very similar to TIA. All we do is we type in T hash, and then we just type in 5S. And that there is our time. If we wanted one minute, it would be T hash 1M. So I would go into here, type in 1M, and there's my timer value set from there as well. So I'm just gonna take that back to 1S, uh, sorry, 5S in our case like so. The ET is our elapsed time. This is optional. We don't have to use it. So I'm not going to bother using our ET because I don't have to use it anywhere else. So I'm just going to delete it and I'm just going to press enter. And then I want to assign our Q. Now I want to assign our Q and we can do this in two ways. We can either take our coil over here and drop this onto the Q, write a signal to the Q from there, or we can insert a new network, put a normally open contact in, and then we can take our valve delay, so the name of our timer, drop it into there and put in there dot Q. If you've worked with Alan Bradley before, this is like using the dot DN bit inside of the timers. And then enter that dot Q inside of there. And that will also react the same way as that coil does here. So I'm going to just delete this coil, not interested in it. I'm going to use the dot Q instead. I'm then going to put in a output coil. And our output coil is going to go to our pump one. So if I type in here, pump one, say OK to that. Our pump one is now in the program. And then same as before, I'm going to drop down, drag and drop my timer into place. We'll call this P1 delay. Say OK to that. We're going to set this to T hash 10 seconds. And then the ET, we're just going to backspace out. Don't need it. So when this pump one delay is ran for 10 seconds, I then want to turn off the pump. To do this, quite simply, put a normally closed contact in just before the pump one condition and tie this to P1 delay dot Q. 
Now you'll notice that this normally closed contact is being placed after the branch down, not before the branch down. And the reason for that is because if I place that before the branch down, that contact will open and it will kill the signal to our timer, turning the timer off, closing the contact and starting the whole situation up again. So what we do is we place it after the branch down so the timer still remains enabled, but it just turns off our pump. This is very similar to our TP timer inside of Siemens. Okay, but we can do this with just the TON. So there's the pump one control done. Pump two control is going to be the same. So insert a new network, normally open contact, take this two hour coil, branch down in between, and then drop a TON timer into here. And this is going to be our P2 delay. Okay, we're then going to take this P1 delay dot Q and dump that there. So when the P1 is finished, we're then going to turn on this time, pump one, pump two, sorry, say okay to that. And then pump two delay is going to run at the same time, T hash 10S, backspace out the ET, not interested. And then when this is finished, we now need to stop the process. And the process is all controlled via this run signal. Currently, the only thing that stops this is the stop push button. So I'll put in a normally closed contact in here. I'll move it after, just like that. And we'll take in our P2 delay dot Q and dump that into there. So when this timer has ran for 10 seconds, it's then gonna open up here, turn off our process, and it's gonna reset everything below, ready for us to start it again. Now that I've done that, I'm just gonna save my work. I'm then gonna go to build and generate code. No errors, no warnings. Good work, Chris. I'm then going to go to online. I'm going to go to simulation. I'm then going to connect to the PLC by logging in. And I'm going to download that to the PLC, our virtual PLC. We're currently in stop mode, so let's change ourselves to start mode. And now we're ready. So what I'll do is I'll double click our start PB to switch it to true. I'll then control F7 that which will write the value. I'll then switch it back to false and I'll control F7 at the game just to react like a start, uh, sort of like the push button. So I'll press and let go. And then we'll see this all run. So we should see our valve turn on for five seconds and remain on. Our pump one then turn on for 10 seconds, turn off. Our pump two turn on for 10 seconds and turn off. And then our process stop. So I'm ready to start. Three, two, one. There we go. Double click this guy. F7 and here we go. Valve is on. Pump 1 has just turned on. It's now running for 10 seconds and then should turn off pump 1. So let that tick away. There we go there. Pump 2 is now turned on and if we watch this you might see us turn on just a blip and that just proves it does turn on. So just keep your eye on it. No, it was too quick, it's only on for one PLC scan. Every now and then you might see it just turn on and that's just the laptop updating at the same time as the scan of this program here. But it did turn on and it must have turned on because that had opened, turned off our run and reset our entire process from there. And that is the on delay timer. It's nice and simple and like I say, it works like every other on delay timer in any other PLC. On the next video, what we'll do is we'll have a look at the timer off delay. As I mentioned in our previous video, if you're interested in learning PLC programming, we have online courses which can be accessed by our website www.scanthem.co.uk or if you're interested in hands-on training, we have our IMFFP training which is our industrial maintenance of fault finding pro and that there's recognised by EAL and assured by City and Guilds. We can provide this training on Siemens PLCs, Allen Bradley PLCs, Omron PLCs, Mitsubishi etc. You just pick a PLC and then we focus on that PLC during the week. We don't try and learn multiple PLCs in one session. It's far too complex for that there. We just focus on one PLC and make sure you fully understand that PLC. I'll see you on the next video, guys. Have a good one.